what's up welcome back we're here for another recap video for the month of october i'm going to be giving you my take on the tv shows and movies i feel like were viable were good that i feel like you should watch for the month of october um if you're not subscribed definitely hit that subscribe button uh the red button below hit that and hit that bell so you'll be notified for when i post new videos or every month i'm doing this every month so every month you'll be notified when that video is posted of the recap tv movie recap so we're gonna go ahead and get into this video um like i said you guys keep watching if you're interested to see what i have to say so getting started we're gonna start with cable TV. There was really only one show that really was like, yes, yes, I'm so excited. I'm ready for this show to come. And that was Queens, guys. Queens is a, a show about this rap group, female rap group from the 90s, who all of a sudden um, made a comeback. Uh, they were really popular in the 90s and they had lost, I don't know. They have broken up like most girl groups do. They have broken up, uh, went their separate ways, and they ended up coming back together. The show stars Eve, Notori Naughton, Brandy, Nadine Velasquez. Uh, so it got a couple, you know, hitters in this show. Like they're all a part of the rap, the girl rap group. Um, and I think the group is called Nasty Bees. I'm not going to say the B word. I'm not going to say the B word. The rap group is called Nasty Bees. And it's in its second episode because they just started kind of like two weeks ago. So it comes on every Tuesday, 10 Eastern, 9 Central time because I'm in Central time. So, yeah, definitely give that show a check out. I really like it thus far. It really goes through the ups and downs that people go through and the drama in a girl group. Like, I love it. I love it. And I love all the characters are doing such a good job. Queens, that's a good show. Watch that. Moving on from cable because there was nothing else. Um, unless you have something suggested in the comments below. We're going to talk about Netflix. Moving on to Netflix. Netflix. Netflix was coming this month. I mean, they kind of had a couple hitters, you know, with the shows. But we're going to get into it really quick. The first show is called Made. Oh my God, get your tissue when you watch this show because it is such a tearjerker. You will be boohooing and crying in this show. And it's so relatable because of the struggles that this girl Alex is going through. Okay, so little backstory really quick. Okay, so Maid is about this girl Alex. She lives with her boyfriend. They have a child together, a little girl. Um, She's suffering from domestic abuse, you know. Um, so he he doesn't hit her yet, but he was really close this time, and that's what made her take off and run with her child. And so they have no money, no food, nowhere to go. Her mom is like bipolar, so she's no help. It's so crazy. And she's trying to go to the state agencies for help. And it just like, it really pissed me off because it's such the truth. If you don't have a job, they can't help you. And it's like, well, okay, I need help now. I don't have time to get a job. I have nowhere to go. I have no money. I have my child right here. I need help. I mean, I just can't, you know, you just can't pop up with a job if you had had you haven't had one in a long time and you don't have anything and you're trying to get yourself together. It doesn't make any sense to me. Like the state agencies can be very, very helpful, but to the fact to the fact that this girl had to go end up going to a domestic violence shelter, which she didn't want to admit that she was in a domestic violence relationship because she didn't realize she was. But yeah, um, she was. She was in a domestic violence relationship. And so once she realized that she went to the shelter and they were able to help her there now she's in the state of washington and i did not realize that domestic violence laws have not really progressed at all like there's not a lot of help for domestic violence victims and it's ridiculous we're in 2021 and 
the resources and the help for domestic violence victims mainly comes from previous domestic violence victims who who create these programs and create these housing and all this other stuff for these women or men to go to to be able to survive and get away from their partner it's crazy and it's just it to me it really really pisses me off but this show is so good you guys and i did not expect it to be this good but i watched it i've been watching it a day and a half it is so good i really recommend made and it is a trigger warning trigger warning because if you are a domestic violence victim if you've suffered from you know like suicidal thoughts anything like that um maybe not even being in a, a violent situation maybe being in a toxic situation trigger warning this show might not be for you because it does center around that and it could be very triggering uh if you're a single mom or you okay the way he slowed down if you're a single mom um or you know friends who are single moms or you know your mom was a single mom your single dad you can relate to this story even just being a, a woman period i feel like you can relate because it is so centered around women and the struggle the struggle especially single moms man i cried in this show like i really did it was such a good show so good so the maid okay um moving on this is kind of a nostalgic show <laughs> that i feel like most people probably be like uh really but yeah the babysitters club it's in its second season on netflix they do have a first season that came out last year I used to read the Babysitter's Club and I watched a movie when it came back out when I was young in the 90s. Like I I was, look, I was in the Babysitter's Club in my mind when I was younger. So the Babysitter's Club, it just hits home for me. It's a cute little show. Uh, the young girls, you know, high, I think they're in middle school or whatever. It's really cute. I really like that show. I don't know why. It's for me, it's just nostalgic because I used to read the books. I watched the movie. Like it was my thing. It was my thing. Not only was that, it was like Sweet Valley High, Archer. Um, what else? Oh, Goosebumps. I used to read all that stuff, watch all that stuff. So it was a really nostalgic show for me. So I really enjoyed Babysitter's Club. So like I said, second season on Netflix. Very, very cute. Um, oh my God, my show. You, you coming with Penn Bagley and Victoria Pinneret. I think I said her name right. So Joe and Love is in his third season. You're showing them domesticated, trying to live a normal life in a beautiful, like, normal neighborhood, trying to raise their son, which for some reason he thought was a girl. And I'm like, what? But he's trying not to be crazy per his usual self, Joe. And it's not working. It's not working because... It's still coming out, you know, but, and if you have not seen this, this season, the third season of you, don't watch this <laughs> or skip over this part because it's going to be some, a little bit of spoilers. Okay. So in this, we find love is crazy. She's crazy. Like we didn't, we didn't think you could be crazier than Joe, but she is. She's crazier than Joe. Okay. <laughs> like love. What is it? So I really do recommend you. It was the season three for me, I felt was good. It was giving. It was a bunch of craziness. There's a bunch of surprises in it. Like, it's, it would really have you off your seat. You. Okay. Season three. Okay, we're going to move on. The next show that I felt that's kind of surprised me that kind of just came out was Colin Black and White. And this show centers around Colin Kaepernick. It's showing his life when he was young. He was in high school and he was coming up and he was uh, centered in this kind of a white bubble-ish neighborhood. Not neighborhood, white bubble. Because his parents were white that adopted him, the mom and the dad, and he had two white sisters. And the school he went to was predominantly white. The neighborhood he lived in was predominantly white. So it was him trying to seek and embrace the black side of him and trying to understand that and getting like a lot of pushback and and very him coming up against a lot of microaggressions that white people 
that white people say and do about black people that they don't understand is offensive and his parents really missed it they really didn't understand and i was just like you don't see that he's uncomfortable you don't see how this makes him feel like take a hint look at the sign like his mom kind of was like what's wrong are you okay and it was just like lady i don't know she just did not see it at all but other than oh besides that it was just showing him how he he pushed through even though people were like oh because originally he was supposed to be a baseball star he was a baseball star why do i feel like i wiped out her hair it just looks like it maybe i do originally he was supposed to be a baseball star but he ended up pushing himself to be to do football because football is what he loved um and so when nobody believed him in football, like it was just like he had, it was crazy. Nobody believed in him. So he had to push himself to try to do football. And that's what he wanted to do. And that's what he ended up doing. So it's a really cool story. I like it. It's very interesting to see the dynamic between him and his parents. He really, really loved his parents. His parents really, really loved him. But it was just the microaggressions of racism that was killing me a lot. I don't know. Anyways, another good show that is not a Netflix show, but it is uh, on the CW and it just came on Netflix. The third season that is really good is called In the Dark. And this centers around a blind girl who gets mixed up trying to solve the death of her friend who was mixed up in drugs and in the drug world and she somehow gets pulled into it with her friends and now they're on the run killing people and selling drugs and going to Canada it's crazy and it's it's really good it's really good because you cannot understand how this blind girl first of all they think she's a mastermind but she really and truly isn't she's not but you can't understand how this blind girl is getting over all these cops. Like, like it makes no sense how she is getting over on all these cops. Like, do y'all not see her? Like, in one instance, she escaped. How do you let a blind girl escape from the freaking holding, holding room? And then you can't find her. I was just like, you know what? I'm through. I'm through CW. I'm through with y'all. No, but I'm kidding. It's such a good show to me. And uh, the first two seasons were really good. This last, this third season was the weakest to me. I felt like it centered a lot around her friend Jess and trying to find her friend Jess. Da, 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 da. It was really annoying. So I'm interested to see how they pull through for the next season because it is renewed for a fourth season. And I wanted to say, you is renewed for a fourth season too. So that should be interesting. So we'll see how that goes. Moving on. Now we're going to move on to another streaming service. And that is called Hulu, which we all know and love. This one show that just came out on Hulu is like captivated me so much. Like it has like opened my eyes to the craziness. It's called Dope Sick on Hulu. It stars Michael Keaton, Rosario Dawson. And this just goes really into detail and explaining the whole Purdue Pharma, the company, not Purdue Chicken, because I thought that too. And they said that in the show. But no, Purdue Pharma, how they were a huge part in this whole opioid epidemic, especially in the Appalachia area of the United States, how they contributed to that a lot. And it was mainly because they had an FDA label that said this drug is 1% addictive. Like, what? My mind was blown. I'm like, so you mean to tell me this one opioid is 1% is addictive? No. And then not only that, it's like when people were like, oh, the pain, it was supposed to last 12 hours. They were like, oh, the pain isn't, I think it was like a 10, 10 milligram pill. It was either the 10 or the 40. I think it was a 10 milligram pill. And then the, the company was like, oh, well, it's called breakthrough pain. Breakthrough pain. They had a response for everything. Breakthrough pain. So for breakthrough pain, just tell the patient to take twice, a double dosage. So you mean you want me to, 
this is a highly addictive drug and you want the person to take twice take it twice twice these folks was crazy this Sackler family who is uh, the founders of the Purdue Pharma pharmaceuticals them have a need to be under the jail all of them all of them because they had to know they had no no um what is it called the proof behind that this drug was one percent addictive they had no studies no uh no information no data no nothing and they were able to get this label it's crooked it's a crooked system that's why you can't trust it you can't trust the government and you can't trust the fda period they try to get this stuff in germany germany was like heck no no we ain't having it and i was just like i don't understand and it is no wonder why people want to leave the united states because they literally just give us anything do anything they don't care like these other countries are really really strict when it comes to stuff like this they don't play no games in america they just don't care they don't care so it's a really eye-opener. It's a good show. I was like, God dang, this is crazy. Because they were targeting those labor areas, the mining, um, farmers in the Appalachia, like West Virginia, Virginia, um, Tennessee, some parts of Kentucky, wherever that runs. And I was just like, this is so crooked. It's crazy. Whew. Moving on <laughs> to another one. Prime Video. Okay, so I have the movie. It's called Black as Night. Now, they have a lot of Halloween movies that they just put up because, you know, this is the Halloween season, whatever. And I didn't care for any of the Halloween movies except for one. And it's called Black as Night, which is censored around this black teenager girl. <laughs> this black teenager. I don't know. Feature dry skin. Black teenager girl who gets entangled with these vampires and now she's trying to go and kill all the vampires with a friend da, 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 da. i have not watched it yet but my friend told me it was really good and it looks really interesting so i do plan on watching this movie so i suggest this movie out of everything else on prime video this this one moving on to hbo max okay insecure is back with this fifth and final season and i am devastatedly sad about it because i truly love insecure and i feel like it's such an authentic show <sighs> i'm gonna miss it i really am but in the interim of things i am really enjoying how Issa and molly are kind of trying to find their way back to each other and so they're trying to get their friendship friendship back on track so i it's just giving everything so far it's only one episode it came out last sunday so this sunday is the next episode so i'm very excited to see it i really am to keep watching see what happens so definitely check out insecure season five on hbo max another movie i wanted to put out on hbo max see this is a white dry spot anyways another movie i wanted to point out is dune which came out october 22nd this stars um, Oscar Isaac, Rebecca Ferguson, Timothy Chalamet. I don't even know if I'm saying that right. And Zendaya. And I have to say, when you go into this movie, do some research. Google it. Because if you have not, this movie is a sci-fi movie that's based off of a book. Um, I forgot the author's name. Wait, when you Google it, you'll find it. Um so he pretty much, it's been hard for them to turn this book into a movie because of all the elements and the aspects of the movie. So you you need to look it up. Look it up first before you watch it. Because I watched it without looking up. I know what the heck was going on. And the movie to me started, felt like it started in the middle of the story. And not at the beginning explaining everything. Like they kind of explained a little bit about the kind of different worlds or the worlds you're going to be dealing with in the movie. It just started in the middle for me. And I was just like, what's going on? And then at the end, I felt like it wasn't an ending. I don't know. It was just really confusing. I just felt like I could understand why I felt like why this was such a hard movie to make. Because to me, it kind of did not make any sense. It did and it didn't. So after I looked it up, I was like, oh, okay. 
I don't know. Maybe I'll read the book. I don't know. There's several books on this. Several book series on this movie. So there's definitely going to be a second movie. Um, I don't know. It's just very, very... I thought it was interesting. It was interesting enough for me to tell you to watch it. But it was definitely giving... I'm going to really have to pay attention to this and look up kind of what's going on. Because I had to look up, I'm not going to lie to you, I had to look up what was going on because I didn't know, kind of, I kind of didn't, I kind of didn't, like, what is this? Like, what, what's going on? Like, I don't know. But after I looked it up, I was able to understand. I'm like, oh, okay. I feel like there needs to be more explanation because when this book came out, it was in the 60s, 70s. Come on now, who? Unless you're like one of those people, sci-fi junkie people, you probably haven't read it. For the 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 current new younger generation, yeah. And I feel like it looks cool, but it it didn't make any sense. Like it didn't. And I feel like in the movie they didn't explain it well, and they didn't start at the beginning, which they should have. So that way you're able to grasp what's going on instead of starting in the middle and not knowing what's going on in the beginning. So other than that, it was um, it was a decent movie to me. Um, so I recommend Dune. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much all the shows that I felt like we're giving something for the month of October to watch all the movies. Um, if you have any suggestions, definitely leave them in the comments below. Let me know because I'm definitely always looking for new stuff to watch. Uh, yeah, and this is going to be a monthly thing, like I said. And so we'll see what's going on for the month of November with this whole holiday. Because, you know, after Halloween, it's the holiday movies, holiday shows, and it just be so corny. Them shows, them movies be corny, them Hallmark movies. So, yeah, that's it. <laughs> thank you guys for watching definitely subscribe like this video comment below what tv shows video movies did you like for the month of october did you like period and i'll see you guys in the next video